Hi, my name is Anson Rosenfeld. I'm a physical therapist and a researcher at, at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm really excited to be here today with the Davis Finney Foundation uh, talking about some of my clinical and research experience. Um, I, I really primarily research the role of exercise and different technologies in Parkinson's disease. And in 2018, I was fortunate uh, Davis Finney Foundation supported a study titled uh, Altering Parkinson's Disease Progression Through a Community-Based Pedaling for Parkinson's Program. The Davis Finney Foundation is nationally and, and internationally known for their work with Parkinson's disease. And their mission to help people with PD live well today it just really echoes the mission of the, the research study that, that we uh, completed. Uh, it ended in 2020. So very briefly, I'll, I'll kind of elaborate on, on the study. So it was a, it was a study to examine community-based cycling. So to really observe the frequency and intensity in which people exercise, and then also to see how, how the exercise factored into uh, disease symptoms and, and disease management. So, you know, the Davis Finney Foundation is really well known for meeting people in their communities and in, you know, where they are with their disease, right? So their outreach is, is I think, one of the things that they're really well known for. And so this study, one of the main pillars of it is we are going out into the community and reaching people where they are with these community-based exercise classes. The purpose of, of this study was to do just that. It was to meet people in their communities. So we wanted to see, uh, see what the role of community-based exercise classes are in, in the lives of people with PD. So we selected five community-based exercise classes that run the Pedaling for Parkinson's program. And we went out and monitored those sites to determine, first of all, what's the frequency and intensity of individuals who attend these classes? And then also, what is the role of aerobic exercise in managing disease symptoms in a community-based class? So this was a really exciting study because you know there are I, I am fortunate to be mentored by Dr. Jay Alberts, who back in the mid 2000s and early 2010s really did some some seminal work about high intensity exercise in Parkinson's disease, and one of the ways that he disseminated or translated that work was to start pedaling for Parkinson's classes, and what these are they're group exercise cycling classes for people with PD. So they're, they're held in YMCA's or local fitness centers and people come three times a week and exercise on, on these upright stationary bikes that the, that the gym has. So we, we uh, found five sites, two in the state of Washington, two in the state of Colorado who were willing to participate and went out and uh, gave people heart rate monitors and, act, and uh, cadence monitors. And, simply monitored their exercise for one year, so a long period of time, really building upon some of these foundational studies that, that are of shorter duration. So, you know, since people with PD live with the disease for several decades, that was a good first step in really studying what happens in the real world, right, when you have life and family and work and all these different things. And so what we found, first of all, is that people, you know, with Parkinson's disease attend these classes on a very regular basis. So if the classes is, is, are held uh, you know, three times a week, typically people will attend up, up to 60% of the available classes. And then secondly, when they're there, they're working pretty hard. They're working at moderate to high intensities. Um, so really it, it gives us great rationale um, that that exercise can be medicine in this population. And, and really that's based on two, some of, some of our outcome data. So we studied several motor and non-motor um, outcomes. And, and if we look at um, UPDRS data, which is a global motor, motor scale of, of PD, and that's the test where you do the finger tapping, hand opening and closing. 
Um, and we saw that in general, over the course of six months, uh, UPDRS scores improved by about three and a half points. Uh, so some really encouraging data coming from this real life exercise study. Yeah, I, this is a really exciting time, I think, for exercise research. Um, there's, there's a couple large aerobic exercise studies that are currently in progress. Um, one is out of the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Jay Alberts is, is um, you know, spearheading the study, and, and it, it's with an in-home cycling intervention, and again, a 12-month period, uh, intervention period, uh, with 250 people with Parkinson's. So a very large exercise study that I think we're going to get some very exciting results from. Um, the other pretty large aerobic exercise study that's, that's getting up and running is the SPARKS-3 trial. And that involves uh, several hundred individuals uh, newly diagnosed who are not on medication yet. But, and that's a treadmill-based study for 18 months. But both of these studies are really looking at the role of aerobic exercise in, in really changing the trajectory of the disease. So I think it's a really exciting, exciting time in aerobic exercise. Um, you, you know, I think the other, the other place that we're going that we're with is, is individualized medicine for exercise, right? So we all know that Parkinson's disease looks very different from person to person. And right now, in terms of exercise prescription, you know, we, we have one single exercise prescription. And so I think it's really, we're really on the edge. And some of these larger studies that I just mentioned are going to start to individualize that exercise prescription. So while we may have a 45-year-old male uh, with a tremor dominant you know, subtype of PD and, and then compare that to, you know, a 75 year old female who's had Parkinson's for 10 years and has more gait and postural instability. So right now don't have a way to prescribe different uh, modes or prescriptions of exercise. And I think as these larger studies um, are completed that we will start to hone in and give more precise exercise prescription for a specific individual, which I think is really going to change the way that we look at exercise and PD even further. I wanted to, to really thank a bunch of people for making this study possible. Um, certainly my, my mentor and uh, Dr. Jay Alberts and the support from the five sites in, in Washington State and Colorado. The study would have never been possible without all these individuals, you know, we had 40 to 50 people really putting on the cadence monitors and heart rate monitors every day, really doing the day-to-day -day work. And, and just to be part of that community, even for a brief period of time, was truly humbling and, and inspiring. So we thank you at those five sites. And lastly, I want to thank the Davis Finney Foundation, um, without whom this work would not be possible. And and just moving, moving us forward and specifically moving the field of, of exercise and Parkinson's disease forward. It was a pleasure to get to meet everyone at the foundation and uh, to, be part, to be part of the group.